Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back for book 33, The Witch Tree Symbol. First published in 1955, this time I have a 1960s reprint with the original text and artwork. We begin with Nancy in River Heights accompanying Mrs. Tenney to the spooky old Follett Mansion, where we quickly learn that Mrs. Tenney's inheritance of priceless antiques have been stolen. Mrs. Tenney suspects her second cousin Alpha Zinn, an antiques dealer in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and Nancy finds a clue, a crumpled up piece of paper with a drawing on it labeled Witch Tree Symbol that she identifies as a Pennsylvania Dutch hex sign. After questioning Mrs. Tenney and talking to Chief McGinnis, Nancy suspects that known criminal and antiques dealer Roger Holt is the real thief. He's also in Lancaster, so she enlists Bess and George for a road trip. Nancy quickly exonerates one of the two suspects, pretty much solving the mystery, leaving the rest of the time for food, fun, and Amish culture. I'm originally from Pennsylvania Dutch country, so I was really curious to see how the Amish would fare in the world of Nancy Drew. The mystery portion is pretty subpar, but the rest of the book is so charming and has such a great attention to detail. Practically every component of Amish life is explored, including the distinction between house and church Amish, life on an electricity-free farm, superstitions, and the use of hexes. Nancy and the girls travel in horse and buggy, get up at 4.30 a.m. to prepare food for market day, go to a quilt making party, and attend a barn raising, where Nancy saves two Amish boys. Amish outfits are described in detail, like these of the Glick children. Becky wore a prayer cap, just like her mother's, and carried a black bonnet over her arm. She had on a long black smock over a white blouse, a white apron, but no kerchief. Henner held a small size Amish man's hat in his hand. The boy's blue shirt, black trousers, and wide homemade suspenders were exactly the same as the girls had seen all the Amish men wearing. Seven meals are described in sumptuous detail. The long wooden table in the kitchen, with benches on either side of it, was loaded with food. There were brown and yellow and white cheeses, red, purple, and white grape jellies, a platter of huge slices of homemade bread, dishes of apple butter, stewed peaches, and canned cherries. Also, there were pickled onions, sour cantaloupe, and corn relish. For a hot dish, there was boiled pot pie made of rabbit and fluffy two-inch squares of pastry. Bowls of soup were set at the places. All of this food leads to near constant making fun of Bess moments. There's an appalling exchange when the girls find a scale in the barn. Bess was embarrassed momentarily, but insisted that George also get on the scale. The girl with the tomboyish figure was aghast at the weight that she too had put on. If this keeps up, she said chuckling, I'll have to go out in the fields and walk behind a horse-drawn plow for two solid hours to lose the extra pounds. When Ned, Bert, and Dave come up to take the girls to a hoedown, Ned tries to nail down a little more commitment from Nancy. Because all unmarried couples travel that way, she said. The clothes carriages are used after the wedding. Ned whistled. I'll take one of those clothes jobs after I graduate. What say, Nancy? She pretended not to understand and said, You'll have to give up college and all worldly pleasures if you expect to marry an Amish girl. Mixed in with all of this fun are the usual mishaps and warnings for Nancy to back off, and she and the girls spend a fair amount of time being shunned by the members of the Amish community who think that they are witches. But Nancy eventually wins everyone over, earning one of the best compliments so far. With a catch in her voice, she said, I must admit that I never thought any women were so brave as the Amish, but you have made me see that a girl does not have to be brought up like a pioneer to be courageous and helpful to others. Next up, the Hidden Window Mystery. 